So in this lecture now, we're going to talk about some introductory mathematical concepts uh, surrounding electrochemical reactions. Um, and we'll simply just start by defining a few terms. Uh, we're first the electric charge. Um, this is known as Q. Um, and it's measured in terms of a unit that is known as a Coulomb. Coulomb is abbreviated as capital C. Um, so a charge is carried, of course, by a charged particle, such as a proton, uh, or more commonly, of course, in electrochemistry, we're doing uh, the transfer of electrons, which carry a negative charge. And each electron has a fixed number of coulombs of charge that's associated with it. where that constant is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs per electron. Now, if we wanna figure out the number of coulombs per mole of electrons, which are normally more useful when we're discussing uh, chemical reactions, uh, then we can simply multiply this 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs per electron multiplied by Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's the number of electrons in one mole of electrons. And this gives us 9.1 Six four nine times ten to the four. Um, and this is the number of coulombs per mole of electrons. And this value here, uh, ninety six thousand uh, four hundred ninety coulombs per mole of electrons, is known as Faraday's constant F. So the electric potential, uh, which is known as E. Okay, this could be written as E cell, et cetera, has a unit of volt or voltage. That's described by uh, the letter V. It could also be measured in kilovolts or millivolts, et cetera. Um, but the electric potential, this is proportional to the free energy change of the electrochemical reaction. And the electric potential um, is thought of as essentially the force that a charged molecule experiences in an electric field. So another way to describe a volt um, is a joule per coulomb. Um, and we'll see that that uh, voltage or the potential relates to the free energy change with an equation in just a second. So the work, um, this is the free energy that can either be released in the case of negative work uh, or absorbed in the case of positive work by the system. During electrochemical reaction. So we're going to relate this work here to delta G, the standard for free energy change, which is measured in joules 
or sometimes kilojoules per mole. <clears throat> so as we've seen in a previous course, um, delta G standard is equal to negative gas constant multiplied by temperature multiplied by the natural log of the equilibrium constant. Uh, but it's also equal to negative moles of electrons multiplied by Faraday's constant multiplied by the potential of the reaction. So this is when all of these units start to be combined or variables. Um, so delta G is commonly written in joules. E is in voltage. N is in number of moles of electrons. And Faraday's constant as I mentioned earlier, is 9.649. And that can be written as joules per mole volt. Uh, an equivalent unit is coulombs per mole of electrons. So we use this delta G standard to explain the work that can be done by electrochemical reaction uh, when it's releasing free energy under standard conditions. Um, but another equation for the free energy change is the non-standard one. So under non-standard conditions, here we use delta G with no degree symbol. And that's related to the free energy change under standard conditions plus RT multiplied by natural log of the mass action quotient or the instantaneous product to reactant ratio, Q. So under standard conditions, we refer to delta G standard with the degree symbol. Non-standard conditions, we have normal delta G. So as I mentioned, uh, it's important to distinguish between standard and, and non-standard conditions. So standard conditions must meet three requirements where the temperature is room temp or 298 Kelvin, of course at 25 degrees Celsius. The pressure is atmospheric, one atmosphere pressure and the concentrations of reactants and products are all one molar. So once we calculate delta G, whether it's delta G standard or delta G non-standard, uh, the sign of delta G can tell us about something or tell us something about the work that can be done on or by the system. So if delta G is positive, then that means that the system absorbs energy or the system is increasing in free energy. Or in other words, the surroundings does work on the system in this scenario. The case that we're normally more interested in is when the system uh, is releasing free energy or when delta G standard is negative. So here, the system releases energy and that energy can be used to drive some other non-spontaneous process forward. Or in other words, the system is going to do work on the surroundings. So a couple other um, parameters that we should be able to define and use mathematically are current resistance and how they re relate to voltage. So current, also known as I, this is the charge that's transferred um, during an electrochemical reaction per unit time. Okay, or in other words, Current has units of coulombs per second. We mentioned earlier that coulomb was a measure of charge. A coulomb per second is also known as an ampere, A. 
and the current is proportional to the rate of the chemical electrochemical reaction. So you want to think of current as sort of a kinetic parameter where it relates to how fast the reaction goes, not so much its favorability, whereas the potential relates to the free energy change, delta G, which is a thermodynamic parameter and tells us about favorability or the force on a charged molecule. So resistance, which is generally written as the Greek letter ohm, this is going to be the amount of resistance that a charged molecule encounters in an electric field. Or a charged particle, even more generally speaking. So resistance, uh, which has units of ohms, is often written as R, capital R. And for a fixed potential, we'll find that the current multiplies by the resistance to give the voltage V. Uh, or in other words, the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So the current and the resistance are inversely related. In other words, if you increase the resistance uh, to the movement of a charged particle in an electric field, where the constant voltage then the amount of charge per time or the current will decrease and vice versa. But if we increase uh, the voltage at a constant resistance, uh, then a greater force will be present on the charged particle and the amount of charge movement per time uh, will increase so the current will go up. So one more uh, mathematical parameter that you should be able to understand um, is the power. And this is the energy that's transferred, either released or absorbed by an electrochemical reaction per unit time. And this power has a unit known as a watt, capital W. So a watt is also known as a joule per second. So this tells us about the energy expenditure uh, per unit time and is thus related to the thermodynamics of the reaction. So you should be able to manipulate these variables and uh, use them to solve for other unknown parameters in electrochemical problems and reactions and be able to use them um, to describe the relative thermodynamics and kinetics of electrochemistry processes. So for more practice uh, with electrochemistry and interconverting between these various units, that describe electrochemical reactions, you can visit either uh, unit four of my analytical course guide, that's the electrochemistry section, uh, or you can visit the electrochemistry unit in my general chemistry course guide, uh, both of which are available 
at chemguides.com.